Hey folks, Aaron here. Welcome back to another anime review. Two today should be coming at you at the same time. We're looking at episode 9 and 10 of Sword Art Online Season 3. Now, you guys know that I apologize immensely, constantly now, it seems like, for missing uploads with, the, with Sword Art. But with the flu that I got last week, I was kind of just completely destroyed. And it affected me almost for like a whole week and a half. So I was not able to do anything... You know, even working, I was actually off of work for four days straight because I got so sick that I, for the first two days, I was legit bedridden. So I couldn't do any reviews, and you know, you guys know that I'm getting better, obviously, now, and I'm trying to catch up with some videos. I'm doing, obviously, the 12 days of uh, anime, so that's, you know, something I'm trying to put in some time for that. So, doing the reviews for Sword Art have been a little bit pushed to the back, but finally, 9 and 10 are coming at you, and I will say... I have a lot to talk about with them both, so I'm going to do that real fast. So episode 9 was a nice kind of setup where we start seeing the concept of the taboo index. It's not really... Episode 10 is what goes into it more so, and I'll explain that when I get to that part of the review, but episode 9 kind of goes into this play where, you know, we see Yu-Gi-Oh! talking to Kirito, and Kirito kind of explaining that there are times where people will go against the index and find ways of, uh, to go across it. And, you know, like the loopholes, essentially. It's basically just him saying loopholes. And that's how it is in real life, if you really think about it. Like, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, the taboo index seems kind of extreme or it doesn't really make too much sense. But think about it this way, that there are a lot of laws that we have in current human society where you find loopholes with them a lot of times. You could say, oh, I did this because of that or I, I tried this because of that, etc. And so it causes this whole thing where it's like, so you're not really going against the law per se, but you are going against the law still, you know, you just found a way to do it and manipulate it. That's why this, that's why, you know, as someone who studied a lot of law and stuff like that, it, it's very interesting to see that there's, you know, the laws we have in play, there's a lot of sub laws to it. And the reason is, is because if something, God forbid, happens, usually nine times out of 10, there's no, you know, prerequisite for that. So it's like, oh shit, this guy did this. What do we do now? Because we can't trial him based off of the existing law. So a sub law comes into play where it's like, okay, so if you do this, if you do, you know, crime A, but it's not fully crime A, here's where crime A.1 comes into play where it's like, you know, you, you made that mistake, you did that horrible thing by going against it and circumventing it. So it's like you still did the, the crime. And so it has different, you know, penalties to it. It's not like the same penalty just for doing the straight up crime. You did something that went against it. It's really interesting. Law, the law, I'll tell you guys, I actually loved criminal justice. It was probably one of the coolest things in the world when I came to st studying various things about law and why society does various things. It's a very psychological concept. It's a very, I want to say, deep and, and almost meta kind of way we have our laws set up. And it's like where... I love when I listen to people talk about laws in general or just anything that's right or wrong. And I'm like, you have no idea what you're freaking talking about. It's fun to listen to, though. Anyways, aside from that, though, that's what episode 9 essentially was. It was really not really meant to be anything more than just a setup. You knew bad things were coming. And as I told you guys in my episode 8 review, I knew bad things were coming because this is the part I'm still at at the, the light novel. I got past this. I'm getting closer to where I'm now going to be just like you guys surprised by a lot of stuff, but I'm not there yet. It'll probably be another five or six episodes before I'm like, oh my god, what's going to happen from here? I don't know myself. But yeah, that's how far I am with the light novel series. But the thing is that I loved episode nine. I thought it was really good. It, it really was a nice setup. It kind of gave this ominous thing of where you knew bad things were coming. And then episode 10 hit. And oh my god, the fact that they had, just like with, with um, I think it was Goblin Slayer, they had the crunchy little warning of, listen, this episode is, is for mature audiences only. Please understand that. And I'm like, Oh boy, I, I knew exactly what was coming because I, I read this in the light novel and I was like, this is the most, the darker part of season three so far, at least so far from what I read. Where you have the uh, two princes, the two high noblemen who freaking are a bunch of assholes anyways, I, I can't stand those two guys. They basically try to rape both of uh, Kirito and Yu-Gi-Oh's pages and, you know, it caused Yu-Gi-Oh to flip out. He, he got super pissed off, obviously, which I can understand why. And he was able to break the taboo index, which caused his eye to like shatter, which I still understand that one. I can't understand that. I know it's like built into a system, but I don't know why it's his eye specifically. Maybe they'll explain later. I have not gotten to a point where they really talk about that too much, but I do know that taboo indexes exist for certain people and it's stronger for some other than, than others. But, you know, for him, it like made his eye just blow out. It was, that was a very graphic scene, but 
then UGO went on the offensive, cut the dude's arm straight off, which I was like, holy shit. Because seeing it, like, I read that part, and they show it to a certain degree. Like, they show a little bit of an image for it but in, in the light novel, but they don't show a lot of it. To see it animated is just makes it more surreal and visceral. But then Kirito comes in to save Yujiro, who's now still, like, he's basically just stopped from the Taboo Index at this point. And Kirito kills someone. Which, it's not like, I know there's, I've seen some comments of like, oh my god, I can't believe Kirito did that. You guys don't remember that, like, the, there's several times in the series he's killed someone before. Like, this is not the first time he's killed somebody. You know, it's Sword Art, he technically killed someone. It's it's like, it's happened. You know, this is not the first time. I mean, it's the first time that I think it's shown in such graphic detail. Because, I mean, legitimately, Kirito just flat out cuts both of the dude's hands off, which is nuts. The guy bleeds out to death after going crazy and like, it looked like his flux light was actually more so affected than just his actual body. So that's going to be interesting to, to find out later on what happens with that because even the light novel doesn't go into that too much. You know, they talk about flux lights and they talk about the kind of concept of, of them being like spirits slash AI, but they don't ever talk about the, the minor details of like where the flux light actually is like is this a person is this a, a just a copy of the person you know they don't they go into that once in a while they don't they, they don't really always explain it so i'm curious if they're gonna say oh this is this is an actual person like that that was a person he just killed in terms of anything and you know lo and behold it, it's it affected them in the outside world that'd be intriguing to me i don't know if that's gonna be the case i doubt it. i feel like that's an ai still but we never know you know but i will say great episodes you know i know the biggest thing, and this is what I want to talk about, kind of end this this whole review on it, or both well, both episodes of reviews on. I know people are right away talking about the whole rape kind of concept with Sao. It's used very often as a like, oh my god, moment. You know, it's it's this is not the first time. You know, episode uh, not episode one should be. Um, I think it was season one had had a rape scene technically, and near the end of season two, which is the fairy arc se uh, sequence, that also had a you know almost sexual assault type scene. Um, Season two, I believe, has it somewhere thrown in there. Probably, I don't, oh, it has it with um, with Shinon. It has that, so it's like, you know, Reki uses that as a plot device, you know, plot device, excuse me, in multiple parts of his light novel series and, and just anime in general. But I don't think people understand that it's not meant to be like, oh my god, this is all I could use is rape. It's meant to be something that shows off the cruelty of people, and especially when it comes to. I want to say some of the people that, that exist in these worlds that, that have been set up in the series. You know, sword art is something that examines human nature quite often, and I don't think people see that because they're always seeing just the concept of everything being so erratic and crazy and, and fantasy-based and isekai-based in many ways. But every season of sword art has examined the concept of human beings. And it's why I think season three does it so well, because this is why I love season three so far from the light novels, is because... It, it does it in a way where it's making it with law. It's making it as realistic as possible. And this is stuff we know of. You know, the, the, if you look at history, you've seen nobles and, and princes and, you know, various people like kings and stuff rape younger women, rape women that are just underneath them because they can get away with it. And they play this thing where it's like, oh, it's because they're not as good as me that I can get away with it. And nine times out of ten, they do get away with it. There's a lot of trials that never happen because of that. And even nowadays, you're starting to see the whole sexual harassment and, and sexual misconducts that are going on with the, the big wigs and, and, you know, Hollywood, etc. And they're finally now getting outed by people because they're being brave enough to raise up and go, you know, well, listen, we got to stop this. We got to put a, a thing to it. But even then, there are people who abuse that because they're like, oh, you know, let's just make that. Let's make a thing for ourselves, too. There's a lot of things with human nature that go into play. And Sword Art's doing a really great job, I think, in my opinion, at least. Of showing the reality of that it's showing this is what happens with humans when they go to an extreme point of their of their thought process when they think oh we're above everything we, we are here and you're underneath us you know we have dominance over you and that's a realistic thing that's something that actually exists in real life and that's why I loved episode 10 because I think episode 10 did a wonderful job of having people you didn't stand like I mean I don't think anyone liked these characters you know, getting their, you know, just desserts from, from Kirito and Yu-Gi-Oh! But even beyond that, you know, the fact that it shows that they were evil, wicked people that have been playing the Taboo Index the whole time. That they've been like the other aristocrats. And if you listen to their, their words, if you listen to what they've been describing since, like, episode, what, 7, probably, or 6, when, when they start, when they're introduced, I think it was episode 7. 
they've been saying that you know they do this and that it's like oh but i'm not doing anything that's out of the taboo index i'm making sure that it's it's okay you know make sure you watch what you do because you're below me they always do that and so that's why I, i'm kind of just tired of hearing this this whole thing of people disliking the episode because of that when it makes sense it, it's a realistic plot device it, it makes sense of this in this capacity more than even the last seasons i mean i can understand maybe season one you know, the, the, near the end, having Asuna's character reduced to a, a sexual object, that kind of annoyed me a little bit. I agree with you, a lot of a lot of people with that, and it, it still bugs me, even in the light novels, that you have Asuna being a strong uh, a warrior woman, going from that, that I want to say that level, going to them becoming a, a damsel of distress. I get that, and I, I understand that was kind of a weak way of just going, oh, let's just throw in this plot device. But even then, it, it kind of makes sense because of the fact of, it's an online world. It's the laws and regulations and rules don't apply to a lot of things. And if you really look at it, it's how online world is even now. I mean, how many rules and how many things you see on common things on Twitter, on Instagram, on Snapchat, do you hear about people, you know, sexually harassing others and getting away with it because lo and behold, there's no precedent for it. Or there's no way of saying, hey, this person really did this to me. It's like, oh, well, they only used words. You know, they didn't actually do it. It's like, but words are powerful. You know, that's that doesn't make sense to me, but it does happen. So, you know, I, I just want to tell people to calm down with the whole thing of hating episode 10 or hating Sora because of the rape scandals that they keep throwing in. It's like, they've only done that three times. They've only done that in specific moments. And I think that for season three, episode 10, it just makes perfect sense. This is where you need it to be used. You know, if they do it like 10 episodes in, away from now again... That'd be stupid to me. Then I'd be like, oh, come on now. Now I know what you're doing, Reiki Kalahari. You know, don't do that. But, you know, I don't think he would do that. I, I, I actually admire the guy's writing. I think he does a great job with his light novels. And I'm saying that because as a fan of his light novel series and someone who thinks, you know, Sora isn't as bad as it is when it keeps to the light novels at least, I think he's doing a great job with season three. I really do. Anyways, what did you guys think about episodes 9 and 10? I'm sorry for that long rant, but I kind of want to talk to you guys about that. Let me know in the comments below. As always, folks, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you do, please help me you know, by subscribing to the channel, checking my Patreon for various rewards and details for that. Um, like I tell everyone, Patreon is not really meant for me. It's meant for other people. I try to help other YouTubers that I know in the anime community and even just the cosplaying community, etc. by helping them and donating to their pages. So it's it goes to them more than it goes to me. I mean, I think right now, for the most part, I think I get like a dollar from Patreon, and I make $15 from Patreon every month, so all that goes to other people except that one sole dollar. But, you know, it helps me in the long run, too, so thank you in advance if you check it out and donate to the page. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day, everyone. Make sure to look forward to tomorrow, where I have the 12 Days of Anime, the first uh, video coming out for it, and I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye, everyone.